Top five schools I predict will have a new coach in 2024. Some of these are a stretch. Some of these are not. Uh, some of these might be tinfoil hat things. You guys tell me. Number five in the not a stretch category, Arkansas. Uh, this thing's just not going well for Sam Pittman. Um you know, there are candidates out there that I think fit this job really well. Uh, and it's just Arkansas is just kind of there. And while he did create some excitement and he's an alum and loves it, uh, they they might need some more juice uh, there in Fayetteville. So I, I think this is not too much for a stretch. I think Arkansas will have a new coach next year. Yeah, it's been funny seeing TCU and Arkansas fans uh – argue back and forth about Kendall Bryles and how good he really is. Like TCU fans are down in the dumps about just the direction of their record, even though it's not necessarily all on the offense and you're also playing with a young quarterback right now. But um, compared to, you know, Arkansas fans who after last week, especially just want anybody possible who can score points and they scored points when they had Kendall Bryles and KJ Jefferson was better when they had Kendall Bryles. Uh, that's been a fun little interaction to see, but uh, yeah, I mean, that was a bad loss last week. Uh, I said this about Arkansas, I think, a few days ago. They just are there. They're just there. There's not anything particularly special about them. My grandfather went to Arkansas. Woo pick suey, all that good stuff. A lot of respect for that university. But um, they're just, I mean, what's what's notable, really? I mean, K.J. Jefferson coming into the year, but even that's just sort of, uh, you know, pales in comparison to other quarterbacks in the league or other quarterbacks nationally who are getting a lot more of the attention. So, uh, yeah, that, that'll be one to watch. Now you've fired your OC. Can't blame him anymore. You know, what moves do you make? I don't know what the temperature, like, I don't know what the situation is like, boots on the ground up there, you know, as far as, like, buyouts and the feeling and all of that. But, uh, yeah, it certainly seems like he's he's entered the, the picture uh, after the, the last result uh, in particular. Seven to three doesn't help. No, absolutely not. Number four. Especially when you lose seven to three. Oregon State. This one might be a little out there, and it's not because they're underperforming. It's because they are performing very well, and they're about to not be a P5 school, and somebody's going to come get Jonathan Smith. He's excellent. I know it's at his alma mater, but predicting that Oregon State will have to have find a new coach because somebody's going to come and make Jonathan Smith an offer he can't refuse. Or they might be a P2 school, but just not the P2 that people think of when they think of P2. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I don't know. I'm sure there will be an Oregon State fan who's like, what is this? I mean, yeah, it's, it's possible he could go elsewhere. He's certainly not in any danger, that's for sure. I mean, they'd sign into a lifetime contract right now in Corvallis. Um, do need to play better on the road. We so talked about that uh, with Jason Shear and, and had mentioned it before. But, yeah, they're a really fun story. Um, you know, they're going to keep on winning some more this year as well. And just to, to what – extent that takes them to the you know the promised land at the end of the year you know remains to be seen but um yeah just super impressed by them and i'd imagine there are others out there with big money at their disposal and big boosters that need a coach that they're definitely gonna be looking at, at corvallis oregon yep number three texas a&m there's there's a, a a dividing line over people who just don't think that they'll do it this year and they'll wait to see if he can beat texas and then people who think like well what difference does it make if you're going to pay him buy him out for 76 million or like you're paying him all like no matter what AM decides on on Jimbo Fisher they're paying him all that money anyway so they probably can't let him get to the end of the contract because they're stuck in neutral and the end of the contract's a long time from now so whatever they've made they've made the commitment to pay him so if you're going to pay him and you're not going to win you might as well just pay him to go be somewhere else and that's what I think is going to happen um and I think that if they, especially if they have a, like another icky loss to someone that they really shouldn't lose to, I don't think that happens this week against South Carolina because AM's defensive front is so good and South Carolina offensive line is so bad. But I do think Jimbo Fisher is not going to be at AM and that they will be hunting for a new coach. And Jonathan Smith would not be a bad one for them to go higher. No, uh, he wouldn't. I mean, there's a number of, of candidates that I think would be. Um... It would be intriguing for them. That'd be a hot coaching carousel. You know, you wonder, do they sit there and they try to uh, go swing big and get a number Jimbo Fisher type, or do they go Jonathan Smith or mm -hmm. someone more along those lines? Yeah, I'm with you. I don't know if it happens this year, um, but that buyout's not, you know, decreasing all that uh, much for another few more years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're still going to be paying in the tens of millions of dollars up until I think it's like 2030 is when it gets below $20 million. I think it's when or the contract is over. I like, think it's 2032, yeah, maybe, well, yeah. when it's like they don't owe anything. Yeah. But, like, 2030, I think they still owe uh, – or, no, it's 2029. They would still owe 
nineteen point eight million dollars in a buyout. Yeah. So pretty far away from that, although that'll be here in no time. So yeah, I mean, how much money are you saving in the long run? At some point, you're just gonna have to bite the bullet, or else you're gonna be waiting for another seven years. Well, you know that's not happening. So yeah, um, that's that's a situation to continue to monitor, but. Um, there's things to like about them too. Like that's the deal. They're not an awful football team. It's just they just cannot get over that hump. They've got to start innovating. That's what they they've got to start taking taking the ingredients they have and you know making gourmet food and not you know McDonald's. I mean, just yeah. <laughs> there, there is there's you watch them and you see what they have, but there's always just something missing. Almost, you know, if they were winning 23-17 or whatever, you just talk about they were methodical like a Utah, but they don't win enough of those games. No, I don't know. they don't. They I'm lose sure a lot of 23-17 games, that's for sure. Number two, this one is not a stretch at all. Michigan, we talk about it for the last couple of weeks. And in fact, people talk about this every year, but it really does feel like the, Jim Harbaugh was setting this up to be a swan song anyway. He's got J.J. McCarthy, a quarterback, and a great team. Scandals aside, of which... It appears that they found out about this sign-stealing thing from the FBI and police investigation into the Matt Weiss thing, which just makes you think that mm. Jim Harbaugh needs to move on from college football for a little while, pull a Pete Carroll, go to the NFL. He is and, – and, and, guys, like if you think about the all-time greatest quarterbacks in the history of the Chicago Bears who have maybe an even worse quarterback history than the Cleveland Browns, he's like third – yeah, no, he's in that he's in so, that discussion. They love him in Chicago. They would love to have him. Uh, so I think he's going to be the Bears coach next year, and, and then it'll be all said and done. So uh, and then and then maybe if that doesn't work out, he can be the Colts coach, and they love him there too. If it doesn't work out with um, Jonathan, not Jonathan Gannon, uh, Shane Steichen uh, there. So I think Michigan's going to have a new head coach next year. Very well, could I mean that's uh, that's a possibility even without the scandal, like you said. I mean it's a a uh, yearly routine, right? It's a yearly dance we do at the end of the year of Harbaugh and NFL interest and who he's interviewing with or who he could talk to or where he could go and all of that. And, and certainly this year, there's already a lot of interesting jobs in Chicago with that connection would be right up his alley, you would think, uh, to to go and take over. So it seems an inevitability that he's not going to be there and, and finish his career in Ann Arbor. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. I think that all this could be just enough of that push to just say, you know what, throw your hands up and like, I'm done with the, the college thing. I'm going to go back to the NFL and not have to deal with all this BS or, you know, be accused of all this BS or whatever, you know, the feeling is. But, I mean, there's there's been no noise there. There's been some smoke there. And then now you add on all these latest events, and I could see where that would just make him go ahead and decide to take the leap for sure. Yep. Number one, USC. Now, this might get back into the tinfoil hat. I don't think it's that far-fetched. I think Lincoln Riley's going to take an NFL job. Uh, we don't know who's going to – like, I can tell you that the Bears will probably be open, um, although they're a little bit of a winning streak right now, that the Raiders are probably going to be open. And that's all I know for right now. You know, um, you know, I, I think there's some other guys that they get more time to. It wouldn't shock me if the Cardinals are open because they just do that, uh, even though they just hired Jonathan Gannon last year. They just kind of do that. I think Lincoln Riley is going to be an NFL coach next season. Hmm. I don't think so. I I think I I don't I, – I understand if he gets that offer, NFL money's even bigger than some of the crazy money now in college football with coaches, but I just feel like – I think if he has a soul, a college, if, if he has a soul, he would then look like he's someone that just not every three or four years he's somebody that bolts. Finish the damn job at USC, and I hope he does. Yeah, I actually agree with you. I, I'm going to give Lincoln the benefit of the doubt here. I don't know the guy, um, but I've said before I I respect him and all of that, and I didn't like the way that. I started to think about him when the whole Oklahoma thing was unfolding and not as like a jaded OU fan. I didn't get all crazy about it. Like some people did. Uh, I could understand it to, to an extent. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't like the attitude around USC right now and just kind of the way it operates. And, um, and yet still, I, I feel like he, it would just be such a bad look to bolt yes. after a couple of years. I, like I, it would be such an awful look for him, uh, even if it is to the NFL. So I'm with you, but, I mean, Paul, you have every right to, to feel like this is a yeah. – I mean, at some point, he is going to probably go to the NFL. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, right now would just be such a bad look. Like, mm -hmm. how could you outdo the bad look of leaving OU in, the way you did? Do that. Like, leave USC after two years, after all that drama, just bolt on the Trojans. 
Uh, it, yeah, that would that would be awful. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a little while longer, but you never know. I just get the feeling he doesn't like being a college coach anymore. Uh, yeah, I can understand well, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's made what he says. It's like, look, I just – See, that was he, Harbaugh, yeah. If I he just need something new. scrutiny at USC, is that, if that is one of the issues, he will be crushed if he's paranoid – as an NFL well, coach. Paxton mentioned the Tennessee Titans. I do think that's a reasonable uh, spot, too. They're, they're about to – I mean, they're they're shipping guys off and, and wouldn't be surprised to see Tannehill and uh, Hopkins and Derrick Henry get traded in the next week, too. Yeah, Derrick uh, Henry was – who was he being rumored to? I saw a thing the other day about the, him. Yeah. The Browns, the Ravens, and, of course, the Cowboys are always in every mix, but let's, let's – <laughs> Cowboys going to be Derrick Henry.